Welcome to another episode of the PFF College Football Show. I'm your host, Max Chadwick, and we've got a very special guest on with us right now. It is Florida State defensive tackle Braden Fisk, who, according to PFF and us, he's one of the top three defensive tackles in the 2024 NFL Draft. Braden, thanks so much for coming on, man. I'm really pumped to talk to you. Yeah, no doubt. No, I really appreciate you, appreciate you having me on. Thank you. Of course, dude. So look, listen, the, the first question I love asking every player I'm able to talk to is, you know, there's a moment in my life where I realized, oh, shit, I can't play football at a high enough level to make it in college football or even in the NFL. What was the moment in your life, though, where you're like, oh, wait a minute, like, I, I'm better than everyone here on this field right now. Maybe a career is possible for me in football. Uh, I mean, it's always something I believe from a young age of just, I mean, even like I was like six, seven years old when I first started playing football, just like, cause I, I was grew up a big Colts fan. So I used to watch like the Colts growing up and I was like, man, like I want to be one of those guys. Like, I idolized <laughs> NFL players at a young age. And you know, it's just something that, you know, each year of football just increasingly grew like, man, like, I just want to make this, you know, my life. Like, I just want to keep playing. Like always want to play in college football. always want to play in the NFL. And, uh, this is, I mean, it's something I used to talk to my parents about when I was little. I was just like, yeah, like, I got to make it happen. And, so I don't know if there's ever a defining moment. Just something that I just always wanted to do. It's just been in my life for so long and can't see myself doing anything else. Dude, I mean, yeah, you're going to be doing that for a long time, I feel like, right now, man. But listen, so. <laughs> you uh, you were obviously outstanding at Western Michigan early on in your career. Entered the transfer portal, ended up deciding on Florida State. What yeah. was it about the Seminoles that made you want to go there? Uh, I definitely started with Coach Norvell. He's uh. He's different than most coaches I've ever spoken to or been around or, you know, been had the opportunity to be coached by. I mean, from day one, just the intensity, you know, I mean, he, he was the first coach to FaceTime me. I could just tell right off the bat, I was like, all right, there's something a little different about this guy. It may be off, but it's different. Right? It's, uh, <laughs> it's new. And then, uh, I mean, I tell a story all the time about, like, he came to my house and, you know, he's sitting in my kitchen. He's, you know, banging on my kitchen table. He's, he's shaking the table. Me and my dad are just like, holy shit, like, who is this guy? You know, like, <laughs> Uh, and he's sitting there, he's challenging me, he's just, you know, giving me all the reasons why I need to come down there. Once I, you know, officially went down there to visit, I was like, okay, like, I see what they're building here. And, you know, I, I knew about some of the other transfers that were, they were going after, coming in, whatever it may be. And, you know, coming off a 10-win season, I was like, you know what, something special could be built here. And I just wanted for my last year to be a part of something like that. And I, I knew he was the guy to lead it, for sure. Dude, he literally, Coach Farrell was literally pounding the table for you to, to get to Florida State. That's pretty hilarious. Oh, 100%. Yeah. <laughs> but um, listen, man, I, I loved your team last year. You guys obviously went undefeated. Uh, in my opinion, wrongly left out of the college football playoff. But when you look back on that 2023 season, what would you remember most uh, about that really magical year for Florida State? Uh, I mean, definitely the ACC championship will stick out forever. Just, I mean, personally, it was one of my best games ever. And then just as a team, it was – it was like that defining moment. All right, Florida State's back. At least, at least that's what it felt like to me because I got there and there was a bunch of guys that had been there through the dog days of, you know, the losing seasons and, you know, the rebuild, so to speak, and just to see what it meant to all those people and just, like, what it meant to Florida State, the community of, like, man, like, because Florida State's such a historic program and for them to be down and then to come back up and for me to be a part of it, I mean, that was the most special part. Like, just seeing, like, the looks on everybody's face, even after we beat Clemson, like, it just kind of felt like we got to – and that was only week four, and it just felt like we got over this hump. Like everyone could take a deep breath. And, okay, all right, here we are now. Now we can make this happen. And like just seeing how far we got, just with that group of guys, and you know, because I mean, half the team was built up at transfers. Yeah, a lot of guys. So many guys were coming from all these different walks of life, different paths, different college careers. I mean, some multiple schools. Like for us to build what we did there, I mean, it's a kudos to Coach Norvell and the staff, and just the whole you know program in general. Just you know what what we committed to. And just, you know, what we were able to accomplish. I mean, it was unbelievable. Best experience of my life, for sure. Dude, I remember I remember saying before the season, I was like, listen, if Florida State can beat LSU and, and Clemson, they're going undefeated the rest of the way. Because, like, you you guys <laughs> – I, I basically knew you guys were going undefeated after September was over, man. Because it's like, oh, yeah. man, if they could beat those teams, man, they're going to make a run for sure. And you guys definitely did that. Uh, another question, Brandon, I love asking players is imagine – I don't know if NFL GM might have even asked you this question to say, hey – you know, if, if there's one play that you want to show us to convince us to draft you, what would be yeah. that play? I think the play I would probably pick for you, I think that sack you had against Wake Forest on the two-point conversion, oh, man, okay, that was yeah. I, I was that was probably my favorite play when I was watching your tape. But what was the t- what was the play that you would probably point to as your favorite play of your career? That's a toss-up. I, I think the AC, ACC championship game, the second play of the game, uh, they tried to pull and I, I jumped the pull. I, I skipped over the center and he tried to back, uh, back block on me and I jumped in. I made a big t- TF on the back in the back foot. I think I just kind of set the tone for, at least for mm-hmm. me, like when I made that play, I was like, all right, 
like we're here, like here we go, like yeah, we're, we're playing ball today, and uh, I just like a tone setter for the defense, and like just feeling the energy that that brought to the team. I was like, all right, we're gonna win this game. Like I knew, I knew just from that second play of the game, I was like, yeah, here we go. Like I was just thinking, like that, that'll forever be in my my mind of just like wow, like that, that was special for me because even my family, I mean, they're sitting right in the corner of where that that play happened. I just like, yeah, it was awesome, super special. Dude, uh, your defense, I think, was maybe the most underrated defense in the country last year. And obviously, oh, you got sure. a ton of guys going to the NFL now. You, Jared, obviously, as well. A ton of guys in that secondary. Uh, how cool is it right now that a lot of the guys that, you know, played with your brothers this past year, you're kind of all entering the NFL at the same time right now? Nah, it's really cool. And, uh, you know, even my old teammate, Marshawn Neal, in that West yeah. he's, going through, he's going through the process. But, uh, yeah, I mean, we got to see – some of us got to see each other at the Senior Bowl, and then we got to the Combine, and the 12 was there, so – you know, just reconnecting and like just you know you see each other it's like all right here we go like we're here to handle business and i think everyone uh, from florida state and even marshawn from western michigan like we all took care of business at the combine i think we all did do well for ourselves and I, that was the coolest part of just like you know yeah this is florida state you know that's what we do <laughs> uh and that's kind of something we say out there is like yeah we, we, we from florida state you know this is how we get it done and uh, it was cool just to put on that showing because i thought we were different and, uh, you know, I think that's it's a whole nother story about the college football playoff. But, yeah, like we proved, you know, we had our, we had players on that team, you know. Yeah. Dude, you absolutely were. So, obviously, this draft is loaded with Florida State players, but they still bring back some really good players next year and even the year after. Who are the oh, players sure. that we'll be talking about in the 2025 NFL draft or even the 2026 NFL draft? Who are the guys that we should be looking out for right now? Brother, the list is going to get long. I know for sure <laughs> the, the, the three guys I had, the, you know, the better, or even four of the guys that I had the benefit of playing around on the D-line, Josh Farmer, Daryl Jackson, mm -hmm. Patrick Patrick Payton, uh, da uh, Daniel Lyons. I mean, they're going to be great. Uh, even on the back, and Shaheen Brown coming back, Fincho Cypress, uh, Azari Thomas. I mean, I could go on about the defense. And like, even on the offensive side, I mean, Kaziah Holmes, he's, uh, Tyler Morlock, uh, or Kyle Morlock, excuse me, uh, I, mean, I could keep going. I could talk all day about the guys, but there's going to be a lot. I mean, what Coach Norvell's building there and that staff, and you know, just was demanded out of those guys. Man, it's going to be special. There's going to be you're going to be hearing about Florida State for a long time. Dude, absolutely. They got Coach Norvell's doing something special down there right now. But listen, it's a it's a really good defensive tackle class, in my opinion. You're at the forefront of that, in my opinion. Uh, what do you think separates you from other defensive tackles in this draft right now? Uh, the versatility and I think just the maturity, you know, how what I bring to the game, you know, how, how I treat this guy, I treat it like a pro. And you know, I think on the mental side of things, it's just how I approach the day-to-day -day process and what I put into this game is, it, to me, it sticks out. And, you know, it stuck out in the last three months of, you know, what I've been able to put on the table, you know, through this pre-draft process. And, uh, yeah, you know, I think I think that's the biggest thing. I mean, I know I'm 24, but and that could be a knock, but it can also be a positive. You know, like, yeah. I played a lot of, I played a lot of football. You know, I you know I understand how to treat the game. I respect the game of you know the the approach that goes into an everyday process. You know, it's not just checking out at noon and going home. You know, there's a whole there's a whole other six seven hours of you know preparation that goes into your day. And that's what a lot of people understand. I think you know, like I said, I treat this like a pro, and that's what I'm going to bring every day. And that's kind of what sets me apart. You know, every year I've played. Yeah, I mean, dude, I mean, you you got Byron Murphy, you got Johnny Noon, you got Devondre Sweat. Do you feel like that you're right now that you're the best defensive tackle in the 2024 NFL draft? I mean, I'd be silly not to say that. I mean, from a confidence standpoint, 100 percent, I think I'm the best. And, you know, there's no, it's not a knock to any of those guys because they're very talented themselves. But, you know, personally speaking, yeah, I feel like I am the best just from, you know, what I'm able to offer, the work I put in, you know, the way I treat the process. Yeah, 100 percent. Love that confidence, dude. I love that. So I, I think an underrated part about the whole draft process that people don't really talk about is you're not only drafting a player, you're drafting a person that you're going to have in your locker room and getting along with coaches and, and teammates and all that. What kind of person can the NFL team that selects you expect uh, when you get in their building? Uh, I mean, it's, for me, it's a business approach. I mean, I, I can have a lot of fun, but I mean, I'm definitely more of a chill person. I'm not the big rah-rah guy, but like, I like to joke around and have fun in the locker room, but it's, it's definitely a business approach, you know. I, I, I come in there. I'm, I'm, here, I'm there. When I'm at the state, I'm there to handle my business, you know. And, and I just I have, a, you know, a regimen I go through and the routine I go through to take care of my day because, you know, football comes first. I'm not. I mean, we're, you know, I, have, I can have a good time. Don't worry about that. I and mean, I spent six years in college. You know, I, better be able, <laughs> I better be able to have a good time. But, uh, no, nah, for sure. I, I'm not worried about that side of thing. I think it'd be awesome. Dude, I love that. So, listen, one of the greatest defensive tackles, maybe the greatest of all time, just retired literally today oh, oh, in Aaron Donald. Jesus. 
Dude, he is outrageous. Is there is there is he someone that you kind of model your game after? Are there any other defensive tackles that you try to model your game after right now? Uh, a little bit, Aaron. I, where I where I can relate to Aaron Donald is the whole size thing. I mean, maybe not high wise with him, but it's just like other measurables. They they him coming out, they call him an undersized tackle. For me, they call me an undersized tackle or whatever they want to say, and I can relate in that way. But um, I guess more so who I model my game more so after is uh, Zach Taylor with the Miami Dolphins. I love I, that I watched, dude. I love him. He's a Ferris State guy. Uh, I went to Western Michigan. I was able to make that connection uh, through mutual friends. And, uh, yeah, I've been watching him for some years now. I mean, he was a 10-sack guy this past season. I mean, he's great in the run game. And uh, he doesn't get as much credit as he deserves. But, man, he's the guy. And he's on his second contract now. And, I mean, a lot of people don't know his story. But, I mean, he was cut a few times early on. And he's now he's on his second contract. And I just really appreciate, you know, how he treats it and, you know, how he goes about his business. And, yeah, I, I got a lot of respect for the guy. Dude, I love that answer. Usually you get the Aaron Donalds or you get, you know, Dexter Lawrence. You pull out Zach Sealer, man. That's that's an excellent answer. Yeah. I love it. He's an underrated player. I think like yourself too, man. Zach Sealer is yeah. definitely a, a baller, man. Uh, yeah. where, are you, where are you trying to improve your game most as you uh, head into the NFL now? Well, uh, I mean, I think both in the run and pass game. You know, in the run game, obviously, obviously just being more style, you know. I think that's something you can constantly improve on and, you know, continue to grow your game around. But also in the pass rush. You know, second and third rush moves, you know, filling the counters, you know, win, win to counter at the depth of quarterbacks. Just, I mean, just more so refining the game. And just, you know, there's going to be a lot more to learn, especially at the pro level. I mean, you're going to get a lot more sets and different sets from offensive linemen. And I think that's what I'm most excited about is, you know, being around the pros and learning, you know, from their experiences. And, you know, hopefully I get in the right locker room with somebody that's done it for a very long time and kind of just, you know, teach me the ways, you know, just because – I'm a curious person by nature, and you know, I'm always asking questions. And right now, I'm working with uh, Ricky Jean Van, uh, Francois. He played 11 years in the NFL, and mm -hmm. you know, I get I talk to him a lot. I just ask him, you know, like, whoa, what, anything. Just what was it like? You know, how did you how did how did you attack this block? You know, who like if somebody gave you this, how are you reacting? You know, I just I, I try to be a sponge. You know, I try to have more questions than answers, and you know, it kind of worked out to this point. That's what I just plan on continuing to do. Dude, I would say, so obviously you were a guy that I really liked in the whole pre-draft process, but I think you became this national name throughout after the season was over. And it started with the Senior Bowl, man. You had an excellent yeah. week, I think, in Mobile, Alabama. What was that whole experience like for you at the Senior Bowl? That was great, you know, and I think I went into that week just with the mentality. Of, you know, I felt like I had something to prove because I think there were some questions like, oh, like, you know, who, who, what, who, what is this guy? You know, like, what type of player is he? When I was finally able to go out there and show, like, you know, like, I can be a three down guy, you know, I yep. can go against, I can go against the best. Like, you know, like I have, I have a great get off, you know, there's a lot of things in my game that, you know, maybe don't pop off on film, but when you're actually seeing it in person. And I think that was the thing that really set me apart of just how I worked and how I went about my practice routine, you know, the effort I give. And I was like, Oh wow. Like maybe this guy is a good player. You know, and it's like just little things that you don't know until you know. And I think that's why I was glad I got, you know, I got to get that exposure and, He's got to get to get to that game. That's why I wanted to play in the game too, because I was like, now, nah, like, you know, there's it's another opportunity, like, to play in the actual Senior Bowl game. Because I know there were some people that sat out for whatever reason, and that's cool. But for me, it was just like, nah, this is an opportunity to show, like, listen, this is what I am. Like, this is game tape of what I do. Like, if you want to see me against the best, here it is. Like, because you know, I can't stand. You know, I was coming from Western Michigan, so the big question was, like, oh, can you play with the big dogs? All mm -hmm. right, let's go. To, let's go to Fort State. Play with the big dogs. What are we doing? All right, we'll do it. <laughs> After the fourth stage, he's like, all right, well, all right, he kind of did, but, you know, what, what's next? All right, yep. let's go to the you know? Oh, then, then after the Super Bowl, like, oh, I don't think he's a good athlete. But what do we do? Go to the combine. All right, <laughs> let me show you I'm an athlete. And it's just like, come on, man. Like, with the, now after the combine, it's all right, we got to find something wrong. So let's talk about his arms. Let's talk yeah. about the work. Let's talk about this or that, you know. And I get it. You know, you got to find reasons. But, you know, I'm just I'm just going to keep on chipping away. And, you know, I'm excited to keep going through this process. And, uh, it's worked out so far. We're just going to keep grinding. Dude, so it sounds like you've had a chip on your shoulder your entire career. Even though you're going to be a high draft pick in the NFL draft, do you still kind of carry that chip on your shoulder right now? Yeah, I, mean, I just try to work like I'm still not even noticed. And, you know, that's that's something that carries me. And you know, I try to stay away from the mock drafts and the storylines because I know how, you know, wishy-washy it can be. I mean, it's all opinion-based. So, mm -hmm. you know, I just try to keep try to keep working like I'm, you know, undrafted, whatever it may be, or just – like a freshman of college again, just working to get my name out there. And, and you know, it seems like, you know, the, the harder I work, the luckier I get. So I'm going to just keep on working. <laughs>
I love that, dude. So obviously, you mentioned the senior bowl. You destroyed that. You just mentioned the combine. You were outstanding at the NFL combine. Yeah. Both I was at your actually at the combine. I was at your podium. You were outstanding at the podium too when talking to the media. Okay. Um, based off how this interview is going right now, I can assume you were outstanding in the interviews with the teams as well. And then obviously on the on on field stuff, dude, you were you blew everyone away. I thought. What was that whole experience like for you, though, at the NFL Combine? Actually, I read something, dude, that you didn't think you were going to get an invite to the Combine. You thought, oh, maybe my football career is over. How cool is it to actually get an invite to, obviously, Indianapolis, the, the, the team that you loved growing up, and then destroying it when you actually got there, too? Uh, it was pretty surreal. I mean, once I got the senior bowl invite, I was like, all right, maybe I'll get the Combine. But, like, there, there was, <laughs> yeah. like, a, there was like the first wave of the Combine invites went on. I didn't get one. I was like, damn, is there a chance I don't? And, like – it's not the end all be all, but this is one of the things like you just want to check that box. And mm-hmm. you know, unfortunately I got it, but no, it was a surreal experience. I mean, I definitely feel like I spent more time in my underwear than I did in my full clothes, <laughs> but you know, and I, I think the cool, the interesting part about the combine, it's more of a mental evaluation than anything. I mean, all, all the fans get to see is Thursday or well, that's the day we ran. All they get to see is test day, but they mm-hmm. don't see the Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, when we're at the hospital from, you know, eight to four doing medicals, they don't see the, you know, four hours of interviews, you know, that we're doing two nights. And then, you know, they don't see us walking around doing all these different tests and things like cognition tests, whatever it may be. Like they just see the test day. So you guys, it's, it's more of a mental test than anything, but yeah, I mean, like you brought up as well, like just being in Indianapolis, I mean, a lot of my family and friends got to come down. Uh, that was a special experience. Uh, they even, they even got to come down on the field after, uh, you know, I, I worked out on Thursday and yeah, it was, it was super cool. And I mean, that's everything I wanted it to be. I wanted to go down there and just prove that, like, hey, maybe I am a little athletic, you know. Maybe I can run around and do these drills and, and set myself apart. But, uh, yeah, no, it was, uh, it was a great experience, you know. I, I'm really glad I got that. You know, going into it, I was like, man, like, this is a combine. You kind of, you know, everyone tries to tell you about what it's like or what it's going to be, but it's, like, it's another one of those things that you just don't know till you know. And, like, going mm-hmm. through it was super cool. And, uh, yeah, I mean, I'm just super grateful for it. Dude, it's one of the longest weeks of a life for a media member. I can't even imagine what it's oh, like for a, a for a prospect, dude. It is it is a grind for everyone who's in Indianapolis right now. I gotta ask you though, dude. Um, there's a lot of stories that come out from the combine about teams asking players just outlandish questions. Did you get any of those kind of crazy questions that kind of took you aback uh, when a team asked you one? Uh no, nah, nothing crazy. I mean, a lot of them. I mean, I get that that question a lot. Like, what was the crazy question? Which none of them were really too wild. I was pretty straightforward interviews but i mean the one thing to ask is like you know what is one thing you changed about you i'm like shit i changed my arm length because that's all you guys want to talk about you know? like, uh, but whatever you know yeah. that's, that's good man that's good i think maybe the highlight of the combine for everyone i think was when you yelled out oh yeah after you ran your 40 man did you right. kind of know when did you know during that 40 you're like oh my god i'm flying right now like, oh, after the first, up crazy. 10, first 10 yards i was like yeah we're rolling <laughs> I mean, I knew like when we were doing like our, our warm up before the fort, I was like, all right, I'm feeling good. Legs are loose. Like we're, we're kind of bouncing a little bit. And I was looking, my trainer was up there. I'm keep looking at him. I end up calling him, like, hey, I'm feeling good. He's like, all right, like, you know, just keep going through the routine. You know, just keep, they call him all that stuff. And uh, yeah, and once we hit it, man, I hit that 10 yards. I was like, okay. And then we hit 20. I was like, all right, I, I ain't never ran this fast. And I was like, <laughs> finish, keep, keep the head down, keep the head down. I hit that finish. And I was like, oh, yeah, we, we did that. <laughs> Dude, as someone who loves your tape too, I also said, "Oh yeah," when you hit that uh, when you hit the forty, <laughs> man, because I was like, "Okay, yeah." Now everyone can shut up about the athletic questions or anything like that, because like this guy is, is killing it right now, man. But <laughs> obviously, man, you're getting to the NFL now. You're gonna go up against some guys that you grew up watching. Are there any NFL offensive linemen that you're really excited to go up against? Oh man, I mean, I think like the easy answer is like the Zach, the Zach Martins and like the Trent, you know, Trent Williams. Just the guys that are legends. You guys yeah. know are gonna be first ballot guys. Uh, and I, like I said, big Colts fan, Quentin Nelson. I mean, he's, mm-hmm. you know, I've always been a big fan of him, so I'm sure he's going to be an animal out there. And it would have been cool to see, like, a Jason Kelsey. Some of those guys you see that are just notable, that are, like, known as the guys out there. Like, you hear about them. Like, you ask defensive linemen, but I'm like, yeah, that guy's different. Like, that's the mm-hmm. kind of stuff you, you want to get after and just see. So, uh, it's going to be an experience. You know, I'm ready for it. And I've been busting my butt a long time to get to this point. I'm just ready to keep on going. Hell yeah, dude. All right. Now, another question. I think you might actually uh, like this one a little bit better. Are there any NFL quarterbacks that you cannot wait to sack out there? Oh, man. Uh, I mean, I, I've said before, like, Aaron Rodgers would be cool just because, you know, Hall of Famer. Like, not many people can say, ah, oh, I sacked the Hall of Famer, you know? Yep. Uh, I think uh, even, like, Pat Mahomes, I think he's cool just because, you know, he's going to – he's a legend. Man. He's going to go down. Like, Josh Allen's a big dog. That would probably be pretty hard to bring down, but <laughs> – 
you got to do it. You're getting paid to do it, so we're going to get after him. But, uh, no, I mean, I'm just, yeah, I need anybody. I'm just excited to get that first one. But, all right, like, we did it. Right, let's, let's keep it rolling, you know, like get that off the back and just, let's go. Dude, absolutely. So you mentioned, you know, you're getting paid to do it. So obviously the first paycheck hits different for everyone. I'm, I'm sure with NIL now, you're kind of used to it a little bit. But what is your first purchase you think you're going to be uh, making when you get your first paycheck? Oh, probably a new car, dude. I'm still whipping a Honda Accord, so. Hell yeah, uh, dude. I need a, <laughs> I need a new whip at some point, and <laughs> I think I'll keep it around, but just you know something else to have. But well, I don't know. We'll see. We'll, we'll see what the, that first paycheck's looking like first. <laughs> Absolutely, man. So I, I love asking players to what is your why, man? Like, what, what makes you get out of bed every single morning uh, and, and go out there? Uh, I mean, for I think it's for me, it's kind of cliche. But man, I just love ball. Like, I love the opportunity to, get, to do what I do. I mean, this is my life. I mean, this is like I said earlier, this is something I couldn't imagine myself doing anything else. Like, I'm grateful for every opportunity I get to play the game. And, you know, I fell in love early on with the preparation period of what it takes to put a product on the field. And, you know, just the daily grind that it takes. I mean, more so than just like practice, but like, you know, the lifts, the recovery, the treatment, you know, the PT, you know, the extra, extra work on the body just to perfect the craft, you know, the little things is just running around on the field, like, you know, on your own, going to late night sessions by yourself. I love that stuff. And I, I wouldn't, that's, I can't take it for granted because I know how, you know, how slim this opportunity is and just how short lived it can be. So, I mean, yeah, I'm just a ball player, man. I just love to be out there and play ball with the guys. And, I mean, obviously, my family's you know very you know important role in my life, and you know, I, mean, I would include them in my why. But you know, a lot of it just stems from you know this dream and you know just the opportunity that I get financially, you know, just self, but like more of just like a self respect thing, just accomplishing these goals because I've had it for so long. Like I said, like I idolized these guys growing up, and now I'm about to be out there with them. So it's just uh, it's coming. It's all coming full circle. That's that's so awesome, man. And you said, you know, you idolize these guys growing up. I mean, you might not even know this. There are a lot of kids that idolize you right now, Braden. And they see the it's kind of the, the journey, the journey you've had in your career, man, and making it to where you are now. For all those kids that maybe you're a little underrated like you once were, what what advice would you give to those kids that are uh that are kind of making their own journey right now? Yeah, I mean, for me, I mean, just keep pushing. At some point that wall's gonna fall. I mean, that, that's something I've kind of cared for a long time, is you know, just keep pushing that wall. At some point it's gonna fall. Like you know, you never know when it's going to be. Like, when I first got into college, I was like, oh, man, I'm going to do my four years and get out of there. You know, after the fourth year, I was like, ah, all right, we'll do one more year. We'll do this fifth year. You know, fifth year came, I was like, oh, I'm glad we had that COVID year because <laughs> we're going to do a sixth year. And, you know, I didn't really want to do a sixth year. But and it, it's hard because you can get lost in it, too, especially after – I don't want to call it failure because it wasn't failure, but it just didn't reach to where you wanted to get to. And, you know, it's easy to hang it up and be like, all right, now I'm going to take it easy today. But, yeah, it's, every every day is a test, you know. Every day is an opportunity. And, you know, you either take advantage of it or you just let it slip. And, you know, luckily for me, I've, I've had the right mindset to just keep getting after it. And like I said, trust that wall to fall because when it does, you know, it starts to lighten up. Oh, okay, it's a whole different world. Like, And, you know, I've been able to finally, you know, reap some of the benefits of that in the last three months, you know, from December 2nd to now has been just an unbelievable experience. I mean, my life is, I don't want to say completely changed, but, I mean, a lot of trajectory where my life is going has changed. So, at some point, that damn wall is going to fall, man. <laughs> I love that, dude. I got to ask you, before you knew you could make it to the NFL, what was that kind of job that you thought, okay, once I'm done playing college ball, maybe I'll, I'll go do this at, with my life? Dude, I have no idea. <laughs> I, I, when I During COVID, I worked at a tree service with one of my friends, and her dad owned it, so, and I worked at this tree service. And I was just like, dude, I can't keep doing this. With my <laughs> arm. I was like, I, and I got a lot of respect for the people that do that because yeah. they wake up, they go to work, and they grind. But, I mean, I was like, nah, like, this ain't happening. Like, that, that's kind of where it clicked. I was like, nope, this ain't what it's going to be. Like, I got to make some of this football stuff because I ain't going to be carrying, you know, logs around all day and, you know, doing the lid. I ain't, ain't happening, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, not having a plan B might be uh, the why you are where you are right now. Because, like, hey, man, this I, this has to work out. Like, this, there's no plan B for me. Like, I have to, you know, I, that's, that's, that's good mentality, man. Plan B was plan A, boss. <laughs> exactly, man. It's always plan A. I love that, dude. So last question I want to ask you, dude. You were not even a top 2,000 recruit coming out of high school. You obviously, yeah. you said before how you didn't think that you were going to be able to uh, to make it in the NFL at one point in your career. In just under basically a month now, Braden, you're about to fulfill your lifelong dream and play in the NFL. What is that feeling like, man? Dude, it's unreal. Like, it's hard to even put into words just like how it's all starting to come to shape. and. 
like you said, yeah, coming out of high school, like, but at the time I was naive to it. I was like, man, I'm going to Division One school. I'm going to Western Michigan. I thought I was the top dog. You know, I was yep. like, oh, here we go. And then you get there and you realize, oh, so these college football is a lot different. You know, like these guys are grown. <laughs> like in my eyes, they were grown. <laughs> like, oh man, like it's a whole different world, a whole different ball game. Uh, but yeah, man, I, I'm just very grateful. You know, I, I respect the game, and I think the game respects you back when you, you know, you put in the work and work don't lie you know you can't cheat the grind and uh you know it's luckily what i've been able to just put in everything you know you put in that sweat equity and you know eventually it builds up compounds and it turns into what it's turning into and you know i'm just uh, i'm grateful for the track that i've had to run because you know it's taught me a lot of lessons and it's got me to the places i've been i've gotten to meet you know the most incredible people along the way and have the most incredible experiences i hope i can continue doing that for some more years to come because i feel like i got a lot left in the tank Dude, I'll tell you what, once you're done playing in the NFL, once you put on the gold jacket and all that, I think your plan B could also be going into football media, honestly, man, because you were, this is an outstanding interview, Braden. Uh, best of luck in the NFL, man. I, I'm rooting for you. I'm a fan for life now. I'm really uh, looking forward to seeing your NFL career play out, man. No, I really appreciate it. Man. Thanks for the opportunity to be on here. This is really cool. And uh, maybe we can connect again in the future. It's been awesome.